Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. It's time for ServiceNow Store Highlights version 02172023. That's right, the February 17th, 2023 edition of SSH. I've got my new system up and running. I'm actually kind of doing both with the email and the new system, but you can see it here. I've got 32 app updates. I'm going to group this by the tags so we can kind of walk through this like we have been in our in my old system. And it's going to look a little similar, but it is very different. So first up, compatibility updates. Regology Regulatory Intelligence had a compatibility update to Tokyo. So knock that one out quick. There was a fix. Sunbird DC Track DCIM connector had a really minor, small fix that I wanted to call out. And then we unfortunately had some release notes, fails, active view connector, barcodes, true view, bit site for vendor risk management, connected workplace, Fujitsu, Institutus Space um, were all release note fails, unfortunately, this week. You can see on my new system, I have the company name actually coming through on those so you can see who's guilty of not providing you, not providing ServiceNow customers decent release notes so we know what the heck got changed in these apps. But in that case that you are a customer of one of these apps and you um, might want to know, contact the vendor, let them know their release notes aren't updated and you don't know whether you should download their app or not. So um, that would be good and maybe we'll get this fixed eventually. So. Let's hop into our new releases. I'm going to do just like I've been doing, so there'll be some editing, but you're going to see the store um, for the new releases, and then we'll go through the highlights like we have been doing. So first on our list is going to be Academic Hub. Academic Hub, the ultimate review and approval application for your university. Um, let's take a look here. Key features, research, and academic applications for universities. Very sparse there in the details. I do have some pretty pictures on this one. There is a video, a YouTube video. I'm not going to click on it here. There is a view of the application menu for their ethics system and assigned reviews under the Academic Hub. And then there's a screenshot of assigning a reviewer, a lead and second reviewer, um, to that particular thing. Oh, I got a fourth screenshot. Um, some ethical review actions, some tasks getting assigned to Able Tutor and Henry Ford. Um, and here's one of those ethical action screenshots, what it looks like. So a short and long description, some feedback, time assignment date, due date, you know, your typical task stuff. And back to the video. So that is Academic Hub from Iqua Limited. I hope I said that right. Next on the list of new applications is Apomni. Apomni? P-P-O, A-P-P-O-M-N-I. Okay. Leave me a note in the comments. Help me with this pronunciation. This is about securing your SAAS or SAS data key features. Ability to remotely export table records from predefined configurations and ability to remotely run instant security center scans. We do have some pretty pictures on this one. There's a picture of the export configuration for AO underscore role. There's some export jobs. Both those look pretty. Manage third party apps. That doesn't look like ServiceNow. Um, that might be in their app, maybe. I don't know, but that doesn't look like ServiceNow. Um, maybe it's a portal view because those are ServiceNow users and assigned roles. But Posture Explorer, so let's go back. This was Manage Third Party Apps, got Posture Explorer and more Posture Explorer properties, security properties. So it looks like coming to the things you can come in here and configure. Uh, for that app and then there's the YouTube video again so nice update here from Apomni I hope I got that right next on our list is Cask Sam Shift by Cask this particular application key features ServiceNow platform and program evaluation best practice migration plan export import design documentation guided setup for import process and Sam P resource coaching there's some technical features in this one Sam Pro implementation automated data mapping manual remediation of exceptions automated software model updates to then current version for entitlements where maintenance has expired and database export or Excel CSV of data migrated for archival and reference I have no pretty pictures on this one but that's the new app from Cask Sam Shift. Next on our list is also from Cask Virtual Agent Spark leverages artificial intelligent and automation to resolve simple, repeatable get help requests without the need for live agents. Key features rapid two to three weeks workshop and requirements, channels, write events to make automation possible, fulfill or service desk agent training, knowledge article recommendations, knowledge transfer documents, future automation robot, technical delivers, deliverables, implementation guides, architectural solution document, quantification of appropriate metrics to ensure clients achieving value, and tailored hypercare plans. So this to me sounds like the, the implementation for this particular virtual agent Spark. Um, no pretty pictures on this one either, but thank you, Cask Virtual Agent Spark. 
Next up is GenPact, procurement as a service, cloud-based procurement offering that runs on the Now platform, provides a centralized and efficient digital procurement experience for enterprise buyers. Key features, source to pay, process orchestration, supplier portal, omnichannel engagement, unified agent workspace, routing and agent assist, operational playbooks, and actionable insights and analytics. The technical flat side of that, fully hosted and managed, cloud-based and scalable, single tenant, AI-enabled self-service, mobile-enabled, centralized configurable workflow and integration ready. We do have pretty pictures on this one. There is a server or ser service portal looks like, so you can go shopping. Uh, the procurement as a service. We got some pens and some sharpies and some more pens. Interesting. Uh, server. Someone searched for a server and got the IT request form. Let's see what else. Uh, back to pens. So yes, either you want a server or you want some writing utensils. Uh, just teasing Genpact. Uh, that is Genpact procurement. New to the ServiceNow store. Up next is InSource SPM PSO. Uh, that is professional services offering. Customers gain critical insight into potential engagements, their impact on resources, and the profitability of those engagements. Interesting. Uh, functional features. Enhanced view of tasks and resources. Robust financial reporting and managed emphasis on resource actuals, allocations, and demand. The technical resources, or technical features, sorry. Project resource planner. Pre-built transform app with CRM and proper modification to demand management. Service now is demand management. To account for a more... PSO oriented workflow. No pretty pictures on this one, but new app from InSource, InSource CSPM PSO. And last on our list is Thirdera Attentive Advanced Phishing Response, an automated end to end phishing process to reduce the manual labor, time to contain and resolve phishing incidents. Key features recommended phishing response process. Recommended phishing response process with best practice integration points, automated campaign, campaign aggregation, documented phishing process flow, automated technical features, uh, I just said that one, targeted analysis, containment, and resolution automation, and repeatable phishing playbook for both automated and manual tasks. No pretty pictures on this one either, but this is another new app in the ServiceNow store. It is our last new app in the ServiceNow store from Third Era. All right, everyone, we're back here to the highlights. I've got 16 of these to work through. We're going to do these the way we've been doing. It is going to look a little different because I didn't have to do my copy-paste stuff from the email. I'm able to automate some of this and bring it in. So the first one is Amazed by Intellective. They upgraded to version 2.06, bringing some enhancements for attachments. So attachments for knowledge articles now can be managed directly in Amaze. Um, selecting the paperclip icon, et cetera, et cetera. A watermark is a new feature within that particular one too. Let's just open that up and make sure that little summary box. Yeah, so, so my crawler is basically treating this as text and is mushing it all together. So I will remember that. Um, but there were some enhancements to Amaze by Intellective and great, 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 great release notes from the team at Intellective. Next on our list is going to be Armor Point. Let's see what Armor Point has us for. They're on version 2.05 and they added service management to the incident integration. That is the update from Armor Point by Armor Point. Next up is CG4 Asset Tracking. Uh, let's see, they enhanced the recurring audit functionality, included several new sample handheld module use cases, added more types of advanced handheld rules, provided additional out-of-the-box CG4 reports, added additional handheld module templates, let's hover again, uh, added support for additional scanner models, and enhanced the G CG4 remediation rules, etc, etc, etc. So, lots of good details on this particular one from CG4 Asset Tracking. Now let's just go the next one this way, probably a little faster. There we go. Chronicle for Threat Intelligence. Let's see, Minor Enhancements, uh, version 1.2.0. They weren't fixes. I usually have like a small little bucket for fixes. I didn't have a small little bucket for minor enhancements. But you may want to know that Chronicle for Threat Intelligence had some minor enhancements. Please reach out to, I mean, it's not a total fail. Um, please reach out to Crest Data Systems if you want to know what those minor enhancements are. Up next is Crossfuse System Health. So the System Health app version 1.3.3. Updated functionality support update set batches. Added new roles to the manually assigned roles. Test definition that are expected to be assigned directly. And added two new test definition for... Oh, didn't hover long enough. New tables created and records missing a description. So great release notes again. Even got a running history of them there. From Crossfuse System Health. Guardrails is the next one from Dyna Software. New features added to system scans. Let's make sure there's nothing else in that one. Yep, that's the update notes on that one. So if you have Guardrails version 7.6.0, you may want to check that out. Some new features. 
ITS Jamf integration, they moved to version .01 and did some patch fixes. I should have put this in the patch. Oh no, I'm, I can see why I didn't. There's actually some text in there. Um, let's do, it's not treating that as HTML. Notice when it summarizes it, I get it formatted a little better. It's interesting, um, I'll, I'll work on that later. But let's see, new in this version, adds missing scriptable rest response, get error code, cross scope, excess privilege, fixed um, extension attribute import, Fixed DEP enrollment confirmation, correlation ID, updates to the ITSM Jamf API message. Okay, so if you have ITS Jamf integration, that's some integrated stuff fixes enhancements. Okay, that's like the, the REST message and stuff like that. Sounds important. So if you're using this, they've got an update, go check that out from ITS Partners LLC. Up next is Logic Monitor CMDB integration. They moved to version. 1.2.15 and they updated the APIs to version 3 again just like the previous one that's part of what the integration is so you may be interested in checking that out if you're using the logic monitor logic monitor CMDB integration up next quality clouds version 9.5.0 um, the I thought this was one of those where you know it actually has some so the import configuration on the app configuration form needs to be executed after updating this version. Okay, so that's just a warning if you're doing that. Um, what else on there? Support for growing multiple issues into an incident defect or user story is what I saw there. Added link to incident defect user story created from a quality clouds issue. Performance enhancements, new system property to reduce something. Live check supported for user criteria and scheduled job included to synchronize configuration from the back end automatically and some minor bug fixes so great release notes from quality clouds i could say those are quality release notes if my um rendering of them was a bit better um you know what you can do for the rest of these i will uh, let's say version uh this is serenity core let's just click on the store app let's go check out what those release notes are probably formatted a little bit better yeah here so version 5.4 there is a bunch of general changes change application scope all kinds of stuff there what do you know the one i click on is like a mouthful to read new entity management updated initiative scheduling investigations operational compliance physical security and risk assessments oh my goodness this is a big update um it does say major release and folks that is a major release from serenity core um, this is by Serenity EHS Inc. So if you're using Serenity Core, I believe there's a few more Serenities in this one. So let's go to the next one. Yep, I got Inhesa content integration. We'll go to the store for that one as well. Let's take a look at the release notes. Change the application scope. I think you're going to see that application scope in all of these Serenity ones. Converted protected script includes the read only, converted label fields from string to translated text type to enable translations, and address compliance console widget error that prevented users from accessing the console in Tokyo. What's up with the next Serenity one? Let's see here, sustainability. Let's take a look at that in the store. Uh, that one looks like there's the application scope again, protected scripts read only, converted labels for translation, and updated a script that prevented sustainability metrics from being recalculated. All right, so that was Serenity Sustainability, and that might be the last one. Let's see here. Nope, one more. Environmental Health and Safety from Serenity. They went to version 5.4.1. Let's take a look at those release notes. Change the application scope. Converted EHS Incident and Incident Detail Role ACLs to scripted ACLs to enable read and write access for reported by and injured parties. Converted protected scripts to read only, looks like the others. There's the labels for translation and updated the default for estimated field of time log records to no. So that's the updates from Serenity Environmental Health and Safety. And I believe that was the last one from, nope, I got one more from Serenity. Serenity Inspection. These have been some busy people updating their apps. Okay, they went to version, let's see here, what version are we on? I don't see a version. Oh, 5.4.1. Inspection and audit management. audit management. We're seeing a lot of the same things there. Application scope, label fields. Rename the Serenity Inspections application menu to Inspections and Audits, added a type field, new module for audits and checklists, updated the Inspection Related Reports filter, um, defined a role to enable template creation and editing, corrected issues that hid the attachment modal, ability to create a new inspection task from an inspection template using the Inspection Console, that's a lot of inspections in a single sentence, and ability to create a new inspection task from an inspection template using the ServiceNow Agent app, dependency changes from Serenity Core at 5.4, then impact inspection and audit management, and there's the more of the update of the scheduling script and updated synchronization between entity, establishment, and target on initiative tasks. Man, oh man, the Serenity team has been busy. Let's see who's next. For our Harlight Service Graph connector for Logic Monitor, that got updated version 2.0.15. 
Let's take a look at the release notes for that one. I'm liking this a bit better. Uh, updated the <laughs> Logic Monitor APIs to version 3. Okay, so technically it's an update, um, but it's just the APIs again. Again, this is an integration, so if you're using this, um, updating APIs to a version is a big deal, so you probably want to go take a look at this, evaluate um, whether you're ready to upgrade or not. So that is Service Graph Connector for Logic Monitor by Logic Monitor. And last on our list, YDS OneSearch from Yansa Labs moved to version 1.8.34. Let's take a look at them in the ServiceNow store. It actually rhymes. Uh, fixed an issue in some browsers where search results don't respond dynamically to changes of search term, workspace. Fixed issue hindering the setting of fields on new records via OneSearch actions, workspace. I assume that their issues are within the workspace. That's why they maybe put the workspace around that. But that is the two fixes or patches for YDS OneSearch. Everybody, you've just seen SSH version 2, 1, 7, 2023 for Friday, February 17th, 2023, 32 application, new applications or updated applications in the ServiceNow store. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in what got updated in the ServiceNow store in the past week. Until next time, don't forget to always be learning.